Poblado. It's like a more like a hippie type of area, local vibe to it. Uh, Sweet Georgia Browns right around the corner. Uh, this is like one of my favorite little areas here in Medellin. Uh, real cool vibe. So basically, all the little spots around here. Okay, Cameron said I'm good. Okay, appreciate it. All the spots around here in Pocket del Blado have these uh, craft beers, right? You know, beers that taste like, you know, fruits and, you know, I'm not a big craft beer person. I like regular beer. But it's a cool little vibe, man. It's a cool little vibe. Uh, you got a Cuban bar down the street. And if you want to meet, like, regular girls, man, this is the place you want to be. You don't really want to meet, unless you're working in Pocket Yards, like a job, uh, this is the place you want to be. To meet to meet regular females okay parque parque de poblado um it's funny right i want y'all to see something real quick though this is how you know you, you know your history i gotta throw my mask on so i might sound a little muffled i'm gonna show you guys something real quick let me switch around let me show you how slick these cats are out here now i'm not even sure if people even know what this means so look at this part of the statue right here. Look at this part. Oh yeah, and then they sell like a little items too around. So look at that right there. All right, native woman. You know, got some grains. I guess she's doing gold or something. You gotta look at the storyline. You can figure it out. You see the ships, right? Uh, you see the ships. You see the native woman. Okay. You see the natives. All right. All right. I'll flip to this side. What do you see on this side? What do you see on this side? You see the, the con conquistadors, right? So what are they trying to say? This is how you know you know your history. The Spanish conquistadors. Native woman. Let me see what's on this side. I never really looked at this side right here. You got the natives. What are they trying to tell you? Then you got a whole montage of houses right here. What are they trying to tell you in, in this statue? This is how slick they are now. Because the Colombian you see today is not, you know, the Colombians are pretty much, I would say like a mixed breed of people. If you see the natives here, the natives here are jet red. They about red as this brick right here. They about this big. So it's funny, right? You know how you see that? Take my little seat. I'll find some ways to sit. I think I sit right here. Get me back. That just goes to show you, you know, your history. Walking around, you see it. So yeah, man. Um, let me get back on camera. All right. So yeah, guys. This is Pocket de Poblado. Uh, nice little chill area. Like I say, you buy little items here. Um, they're not gonna be hitting you over the head like they would in Pocket Yards. This is a great area. Um, the bars behind me to meet like local girls, stuff like that. You got have your Spanish game on point. Um, other than that, man, it's, it's a great little area. This is like the area I kind of kick it in for the most part is Parque de Poblado and Provenza. So Provenza is on the other side of Parque Jerez. This is on like the bottom side of uh, Parque Jerez. Yeah, Jerez, not Jerez. So, guys, uh, you know, we, we currently reached the 5,000 mark in the group. And I want to welcome all the new brothers. I appreciate y'all joining the group. I appreciate y'all participating in the movement. Uh, I appreciate all the support. You know, brothers buying the shirts and everything, buying the merch. I, I really appreciate that. Brothers are giving really good information, man. I'm talking about we got some good guys in this group. Solid information. But I want to say this real quick. You know, keep everything on a positive note. You know, when you have 5,000 men, you know, sometimes you just got to agree to disagree without throwing insults, without taking it to a level of disrespect. And for the most part, you know, things are, are cordial, you know, nine times out of 10. But a man's opinion is simply his opinion. And I got to respect that. Some guys, you be like, where is this coming from? That shit don't make no sense whatsoever. But you gotta understand that intelligence, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some guys just gonna be them, they're gonna do them. Rigo Tassi, what's going on, brother? What's happening with you? 
Michael Walker says, just got my PCR test back. I'll be in Columbia tomorrow night. That's what's up, man. Hit me up. Let's link up. So, um, everything is going great in the group, man. Like I said, I appreciate the guys' support. Guys have been buying the t-shirts. I appreciate that. But I just want to explain, you know, first of all, the post I made a couple of days ago, uh, as far as brothers not supporting each other economically, you know, and for the most part, you know, because, you know, the comment I made or the post I made was somewhat, I guess you want to say controversial. You know, I, I basically said, you know, brothers are more comfortable working for, you know, white men than supporting each other like other groups of men. And, you know, brothers made, you know, for the most part, brothers made some very intelligent dialogue and comments. And, you know, the post was, I ain't gonna say it was harsh, but it was just real talk. It was just what I was feeling at the time. Um, because we got 5,000 black men in this group, brothers. And if we can kind of get over these little mental roadblocks that we have and these humps that we have as far as trusting each other and supporting each other, we can go a very long way. We can go a long way. 5,000 men is like damn near a small military. It's damn near a small little neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? If we can work together and support each other economically, um, we, like I said, we can go a long way, brothers. We can, we can literally create millionaires in this group, okay? Now, everybody is not going to see that. You know, everybody is not going to have that vision, and that's okay. Guys going to sit on the sidelines, they're going to sit on the sidelines. But the problem with sitting on the sidelines is when you see another brother or a group of brothers that's doing, that's successful, that made the sacrifice, right, that, you know, invested time and money in something, and you see them moving around, you're going to be on the sideline throwing shade because you didn't participate. And then what a lot of brothers want to do is they want to see something already going. They want to see something already successful, and then they want to hop on the bandwagon when it's just no, there's no more seats at the table. Then they say, see how, see how brothers do? Brothers don't look out. When they get on, brothers don't look out. You know? Same thing in the hood. You know, brothers create a crew, right? They put something together. They start to be successful, and what happens? The whole community tries to rob this group of brothers. It happens all the time, all right? So, you know, like I said, for the most part, when I made that post, man, the comments was just real talk. A lot of brothers are highly intelligent in this group, and they understood what I was trying to say without taking offense. The thing about a lot of brothers is a lot of us did not have a dance note there. A lot of brothers... We just didn't have that man-to-man -man talk with our father, man. I'm telling you, man, a lot of brothers have been through that childhood trauma with not having a man. And still sharp and still, you know, uh, brothers got to heal each other. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch these motherfuckers that be living and shit. But, uh, like I said, still sharp and still, man. And sometimes you got to have them harsh conversations with men. And, you know that will help improve your life and improve each other life bro you just got to have that real man-to-man -man talk and sit down and be like look brothers you know we can do better there's no nicer way to say it than we can do better and you got brothers in the group that say stuff like well to each his own what you eat don't make me ish or i ain't worried about what another brother doing it ain't about worrying about what another man is doing you know me i don't give a damn what another man does with his time money johnson whatever i don't care about that all i'm saying is we can have an easier life. We can have an easier life if we decide to work together. That's all I'm trying to explain to you, brothers. We can have an easier life and we can improve the lives of others if we come together and work together. I'm going to give you a prime example real quick and I'm going to go because I keep continuing my exercise. All right? And it's not about me. It's not about me. I'm not trying to halt no shirts. I'm telling people all the time this has been a, this is a free group. I haven't offered anything for sale for four years in this group, okay? So it's not about the money, okay? It's not me trying to hustle you guys and trying to come up off you guys. We gotta get out of that mentality because everybody needs money, everybody needs resources, okay? And every other group of men work within their own economy, kind of accept us to a certain degree at that high level that they are doing it, right? So, you know, back in the day, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to condense this little story as fast as possible. Back in the day, maybe about 2007, I worked for this boxing company, right? I was driving a truck for this boxing company. Now, the guy that uh, was, I guess, the general manager, and he's not the owner of the company, but he was high up there, right? You know, he liked me, racist white guy from Alabama, I'll never forget it. 
And he said, hey man, you know, we don't have a lot of routes. So if you want, you can work in the warehouse. And I told him, I said, look bro, I got a CDL. I don't work in the warehouse. He said, okay, well, you wanna work in the office. I said, cool, I'll work in the office. So by me working in this office of this boxing company, I was able to learn logistics, right? I was able to learn logistics. I was about 25, 26. And it's funny, right? It's funny how you can learn a lot from your enemy. Now, Ron was a straight Southern Republican, 50 some year old white guy, multi-millionaire, but he took it upon himself, he took it upon himself to want to teach me. For whatever reason, he liked me. You know, we, white guys are like that for some reason. They like to, you know, teach, you feel me? So when I'm learning about logistics and how things work, I learned a lot about the network of white men, right? On how most of them have these secret organizations, right? That's underneath their corporations. Ron was a part of the Tennessee Mafia, okay? Which is basically some it's, it's a Tennessee Mafia, self-explanatory, right? So what these guys would do is they all had different businesses, right? They, they all had different businesses that worked within the network. And I never forget this. One day, you know, boxes just wasn't selling like that, you know? And Ron was like, okay, Ferris, uh, put in the order for 10,000 more boxes from um, Alabama. And I'm like, Ron, we, we got a warehouse full of boxes already. We don't need no more boxes. He was like, yeah, but you know, go ahead and just make the order. I'm like, okay. So it, it just shot me. I'm like, why is he ordering more boxes when we have an overflow of boxes? You know, we're going to put these boxes like everywhere. It was explained to me that it didn't matter if they needed the boxes or not. It's about supporting the network. Okay, a salesman need to make a sale in order to feed his family. So Ron played it forward and bought stuff he didn't need, right? To keep the flow going, bro. Like I said, you buy 10,000 from me, I buy 10,000 from you. And we have to learn that as black men, okay? We gotta learn how to play it forward. We got 5,000 brothers in this group. If you brothers wanna offer a product or a service, post it in a group. Send me an email, say, hey Aaron, I sell hats, okay? Uh, do you mind if I post it in the group? I said, no problem, bro. I'll, buy, I'll be the first one to buy your hat, okay? I'm gonna lead by example. If you post a sales or service that I need, don't post no janky shit, but I will buy, okay? I will buy. Because that's how brothers start to build a network, man. Sales can really change our lives, brothers. It's sales, okay? Stocks is cool, I got stocks. Crypto is cool, I got crypto. But sales is undisputable. 5,000 black men, okay? You post a hat, a cool looking hat, you know, travel, game, or, you know, paradise life, you know, whatever your brand is, you post a hat. And that joint sale, 500, let's just say 10%, 500 hats, okay? At a $5 up mark or whatever, you know, $10 up mark. You just made, what, $5,000, something like that? My mouth might be off, I'm just flowing. But this is the type of stuff that we can accomplish, we can do, we can take it to another level. It's not all about just posting holes and, you know, trying to stun on dudes and trying to one up dudes, trying to just 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 bait brothers information. You know, I had a I mean you would be surprised the comments I've gotten from since I started, you know, selling a little merchandise and you know, now that everything is kind of, you know, going good for a brother, you'd be surprised at the little comments and the little shade I'd be getting, bro. That don't make no sense at all. You know, I had one brother in the group tell me, okay, uh, you talk a good game. But black people didn't make those t-shirts. I'm like, bro, you do realize I live in Columbia, right? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I had another brother tell me that, hey man, don't believe that uh, a white guy bought you no know, shirts. It was Cointel Pro. I said, so let me get this straight, bro. You telling me that the government bought some black man t black man travel t-shirts to disrupt us? <laughs> you know, it's like anything, 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 any excuse a brother can make not to give a dollar to another brother. It's just insane to me. They go to the goddamn police there. They beat by that too. Let me turn it around, man. So I can see what's going around Columbia. I mean, you know, I'm surprised there ain't a whole bunch of women out in this motherfucker on a Saturday. But yeah, fellas, I just want to make a comment and say that, man. Um, welcome all the new brothers to the group. We're working out here in Columbia, man. Um, you come out here, we're going to have a damn good time. We're building the app. We want to build services that brothers 
are going to, you know, uh, need when they come out here, bro. So, so we can keep the money in house. Okay. You about to say something, dude. but anyway. Uh, yeah, and also, man, a difference of opinions don't mean you got to be disrespectful to a brother. I joke around sometimes, you know. I, you know, I throw a little joke here and there at a brother because sometimes brothers are talking just cash money bull bullshit. But you know, if you don't like that brother's information, then just like, can't hit dislike, but you know, just move on, just scroll on up, bro. Uh, shout out to the, the winner circle. Shout out to everybody on the team. Shout out to Cardell. He's down there in the DR. Shout out to Moss, shout out to Flip Flop, you know, shout out to Bitcoin Bobby, shout out to everybody, man. You know, we out here winning, and I want you guys to win too. Peace. Hey guys, make sure you check out the Black Men Travels merch store, where we have Black Men Travels t-shirts and Black Men Travels tank tops. Peace.